today um, we're going to talk about essentials of draft sites. So essentially, draft sites for the AutoCAD user. We'll actually cover some other to you know topics how it relates to SolidWorks as well, and the commonalities between between SolidWorks and and draft site as well. And you know, of course, the the main thing is the how draft site is so sim is very similar to AutoCAD and how it's ease of use of pickup and uh, adoption for an alternative for 2D CAD. Okay, so kind of some bullet points here. Um, we'll see here. Um, I did this one at 3D Experience World this last year. I've done it at uh, once prior to this one. It was SolidWorks World was the name, but we're going to see the easy transition. We're going to look at the similarities between GraphSite and AutoCAD. And also, we're going to discuss about the difference of the level of licenses, just so you understand them better and what makes more sense to you um, based on that. And also, then at the end, too, I'll hit, I'll hit up uh, some topics of what's similar between draft site and SOLIDWORKS as well. If you're toggling back and forth between each other, um, like a lot of people current, you know, like I did and a lot of people currently probably still do between layouts and, and then also designed in 3D, okay? So the first one we're gonna talk about is the ease of transition, okay? We're gonna be our takeaway. So the transition, understanding of the similarities and also which version is right for you. A little about myself, been doing this quite a while. Um, I am on the cam side, more so on this, this day and age, but I was a SOLIDWORKS um, user in CAD many years before I was in, in the cam side. And also before that, of course, I uh, was an AutoCAD user before 3D. So I think I date myself back to R10, AutoCAD R10. So that's circa 92, 93-ish, right in that range. Okay. so. We're going to talk about the low learning curve here. I'm going to show you some comparison devils between the two. Um, I will jump into draft site um, live as well, but just to show you the interface between AutoCAD, um, I'm going to show you AutoCAD LT and then draft site and the differences between them. I'm just going to run this little video just because I don't have, I only had it for 30 days, the, the, the trial version of AutoCAD. So on the left hand side, you'll see if I type in line. So that's a keyboard shortcut. So I'm going to draw a line here on the left hand side in, in AutoCAD. Okay. So I'm going to right click and get cancel. Now I jump to the right side of the draft side. I type in L. Okay. Notice how it filters as well. So it filters to line. So I'm just going to click and draw lines as well. Okay. And then I have a right click where I can cancel and do things just like I did on the AutoCAD side. Okay. I'm going to Go ahead and select those and delete them, just like I would when I'm over here on the AutoCAD side. So I can click erase or I can pre-select them or hit delete, whatever I'm doing here. Very similar to what we're doing here. Okay. And then from here, if we look down here, I have where I can type in list of commands. This is in draft site pro or premium. We can have the list of ability. I would type in overkill, which is a common AutoCAD one that gets rid of duplicate lines. We have lines on top of lines. So that's on the AutoCAD side. I typed in overkill. So we'll notice that it picked up those segments and deleted them. Okay. And then same thing here. I'm going to type in overkill. And we'll talk about this today is notice it says discard duplicates. Draft site has what they call aliases. So if I type in something that's a draft site command or a AutoCAD command, it'll know the difference between them and know that they're common. So you can type in discard duplicates or I can type in overkill. Either way in draft side, it'll, it'll know what I'm talking about. Okay, and we'll get more into discard duplicates. If you notice there, I right mouse click like I can do in, in SOLIDWORKS where I have um, mouse gesture commands that are available to me in draft site, which makes it, like I said, unique for the draft side user. Okay, for compared to the SOLIDWORKS. So let's go to the next one. Might have to close that. Yep. Okay. So let's go back here. Um, similar commands. We kind of talked about that as well. Um, that's what we just talked about. Let's look at the comparison demo real quick. We kind of jumped ahead. I jumped ahead of slides. So if we look, everything's very similar. So here's my AutoCAD layout. Okay, so we'll see. We have a save. You know, we have everything is the same in the ribbon style. 
2016, they introduced the ribbon style in draft site. So of course it's in 2019 and in 2020. And the latest version of uh, draft site currently is draft for download is draft site um, 2020 at service pack one. So just FYI. Um, you'll see we have the same kind of commands, same layout, same order. Um, we can go ahead You notice we have a published the e-drawings, but they do not, you know, things like that. I can batch print in the pro and the premium of draft site. I can do these and close all and go to options right here, just like I can in recent documents, just like I can on the AutoCAD side of things. So if we look here, we have our two plate uh, to, on the top. So and we have our save, our print, our undo, our redo, our favorite buttons there. Um, if I go to the other side here, you'll see that I have new and we have open and save and redo. Can't see that right there because that, there you go, that cube drawing button is right there. So but you got the same things there. Okay. So learning going between the two, I'm here I kind of click through the tabs a little bit just to kind of show you. Notice there's a draw, modify, and annotation in layers and, and such on, on the draft site as well. Same thing with groups and all that properties. That's the same thing on your draft site on the right hand side. Okay. So very, very similar to what you're used to. And if we notice also on top, the home, insert, annotate, manage, those are all the same on, uh, on the draft side, if I point here now. I'm not gonna go through all the buttons, but I, the video does, but um, I think you guys understand. We have everything very similar to the same, okay? All right. So this one here is a comparison where we actually go in here and I can change in between pull down. So I have the classic pull down that everyone loves with all their um, all of their two bars located everywhere. You can still use what the draft site calls classic. Um, I can customize, I can actually turn on whichever tool command, command bar I want. I'm gonna turn a couple of them on here and then drop and drag them to wherever I want. I can drop them on the side, on the top, on the bottom, wherever you guys wanna drag them. Just kind of drag it around to show you, just like you're used to. Okay, of course you can do custom ones as well. Um, so here I'm just kind of hovering over some, just showing you what they are. Okay, so you have a classic ribbon style and I'll show you that when I get into, into graph style a little more too. And then also you have the ribbon style. And of course you can create your own custom uh, as well. And I'll show you a little bit about that later. Okay, we, we've already saw this one where we did the overkill commands. Okay, so let's go to the similar auto list. That's what I like about this is I can go in here and I can load an auto list. I can do, do this um, individually, you know, where I do insert load application. Okay, I can do that or type it in now that it's loaded. So now that it's loaded, I can go ahead and do it. I can also put it in the start uh, when I do in the, when I start up the, the, the software as well, I could put a, a load sequence in there as well and it'll load everything. So notice we have mouse gestures um, right there. Let me go back a little bit there. So I can load that. Um, here's my mouse gesture. So I'm just right clicking and dragging just like I would inside SolidWorks. And I have mouse gestures and I have the availability to change those and customize those as well. Okay. So a flatten command is the old classic command, uh, Lisp command back in the day when you were supposed to be drawing on the X and Y uh, plane, right? And then someone draws off in the in the Z until you click on orbit and rotate it. And you wonder why you can't trim to it or, or connect corners because it's not in the same plane. Yeah, that's what the flatten one is. That one, geez. I think the date on that one is 95 um, that I had from back in the day. And I, so it, it, that's how old that list routine is. So we're in 2020 and it works. So no, no problem there. Okay. There also is batch printing in, in pro and premium. So we can do uh, batch printing. I have a bunch of slides on this later on to show you batch printing. It shows you the same thing. So instead of going through the video, um, I'll just go through here. You, you'll get the same slides. But this one is a, the mouse gestures that I hit on a little bit earlier. I want to hit that again here. So this is similar to, to, to SolidWorks, of course. So of course I can customize these. I can do whatever I want here. So we, there's a lot of things I'll show you a little later that are similar to 
these solid works. So here's my my mouse gestures where I can choose from. These are the ones that are currently assigned. I can choose between four and eight, or turn them off if I don't want them. So you'd want to hit that little checkbox on top if you don't want them on. So if you're right clicking and this is coming up and you're like it's driving you crazy, and you're not used to them, you can turn them off, of course. Okay. So let's get into some of the similarities. So we're going to talk now draft site with current 2D CAD users that are using essentially AutoCAD. Okay, we're gonna talk about identical commands, keyboard shortcuts, uh, list routines. We're gonna also talk about how to load them. We're gonna also talk about profile customizations. And then we'll talk a little bit more, like I said, uh, about the batch printing, and then also keep current with the latest version. So let's get in there with this. So of course, our favorite F buttons are available to us. Right, our F7 for grid and F8 for ortho and snap is F9, right? Those are our favorite ones. There is a new one here that you'll see. Um, it's an F4, which is for SOLIDWORKS people. It's a uh, recent commands. If I hit F4, I get a recent uh, documents one. So I get recent documents that come up and we can control tab through them. I'll show you that here in a little bit. We can go all the way down to, if we look there on the bottom, we can go all the way down to R12. Like I was saying earlier, I started at R10. So that's dating everyone here, right? Including myself, but we can say back, this is 2013, there's more available to you now. And I'll show you what those look like here real quick. So if I go into here real quick and I say, um, and I say save as, okay, I can go in here and here's my, oops, let me drag this up a little bit, right about there. And if I save as, I can go all the way down. Same thing, I can always go down to R12 and the DXF, but if we look now, we have 18 in, in there versus if that wasn't showing that. Mine is set at, at a default when I click save, which is the common 2002 to 2000. That's usually, depends on if you're, because on the, on the manufacturing side, there's a lot of controllers that if they want to read in AutoCAD, it needs to be in this 2000 to 2002 timeframe. So, that's the reason mine's set there. I can always do a save as and override the default, just like you can in AutoCAD, like I'm doing now. So if I need to save down or save up, I can do that if someone um, needs, needs that. So if someone sends you a, a newer print that, you know, you're, you're, some of your AutoCAD users, if you still have AutoCAD licenses, you can save it down for them. You know, that's what I was talking about earlier, where you can use the latest version. So you can have a seat of draft site to save down as well. Okay, go back to my PowerPoint here. Okay. okay, so there's our keyboard shortcuts. That's just F keys. Okay, some more keyboard shortcuts and commands. If we type in erase or E for delete, we get that alias. So in in um, in AutoCAD, it erases to erase thing. Also, I can click uh, delete or enter delete. Either way, that's an alias for that is delete. So if I type in one or the other, draft site is gonna know what I'm talking about. Of course, we have grip selection. So if we click on, a, on an entity, um, select an entity, we get our grips on the midpoint and the endpoints. We also get the normal UCS. So if I type in UCS, hit Z and hit R for reference and create my reference angle, I can do that just like zoom extends to Z. I got some slides here later on to show that. Um, we have all those UCS is very similar. It's exactly the same. Um, split equals break inside draft site. So if you want to break a line, so if you want to make it into two segments, the AutoCAD one is break inside SOLIDWORKS. It's called split. Split comes from draft site sketching. I mean, sorry, it comes from SOLIDWORKS sketching. So that's where split is. It does the same thing. Again, it's an alias, so I can type in split or break, and it's going to know what I'm talking about. Same thing with paint properties. We have that, so we can match properties. And then also we have PR, we can type in for a keyboard checker for properties and LI for list and click on a line to get its um, properties and information. Clean is purge inside draft site. I can type again, type in either one, clean or purge. And we'll see on the right hand side, there's that screenshot of that one, because that's a favorite to everyone is you get the same type of, type of setup, same kind of look when you wanna purge anything that's in your, um, that's in your drawing at the end, okay? Um, F is fill it, you know, spell check is SP, everything is very tampers, CHA. Um, 
So we have identical, more identical commands. So just, just showing you more options. You know, S is stretch, scale is SC, and explode is X. All that stuff is the same. Okay. All right. You have blocked, you have groups you can use. Um, o is for offset, T is for trim, and we can extend as EX. So all we can freeze and control all layers. I have more slides on the layers here in a little bit. Um, and of course, note and simple note are the same as well. Okay. If I go into this one here, this one has some identical commands, of course. Um, if we look here, we can always cancel just like we do in, in uh, AutoCAD. We always can hit the familiar escape button, right? Um, hit the escape button to cancel command. Space bar is your enter key unless you want to change that. But out of the box, it's set up the same way. Of course, line is the same. So all these are very similar. These are just here for your reference. Okay. Uh, here's your zoom commands, very similar. I type in these, I get zoom window, I get zoom extents, I get zoom previous. So you get all that also with your layer commands. Here's from the pull down that you see on the right hand side of that screenshot. That's the pull down version of where you can go, but you also remember you can have a toolbar uh, turned on to have this as well, which I'll show you here in a minute. So you can change the current layer, you can match layers, you can do all the layer commands you're used to. So here's your layer commands, okay? So you can do freeze layer, you can thaw layer, okay? You can also merge layers. Of course, the biggest one is probably layer match, your match and nulls, and also isolate is there as well. Okay. If we look inside here, if I have object snaps, of course, so if you look here, if I go to my specified toolbars, I can go ahead and click on the snap entity and turn on the toolbars I want. And then also if I right click, you'll see the one on the right hand side where I can have these um, come up. And also if I have my e-snap settings way down at the bottom there on the right hand uh, image, I can go and turn which ones I want on by default. Okay, these, this is the one that I can override or turn on any of these snaps that I want to turn on for when I'm, when I'm drawing, when I'm sketching lines or sketching any entities. Okay. We talked about this earlier, just want to hit on it again on the video, is auto list commands will work in between. So overkill, there's been a few that maybe need to be doctored. It's usually um, depending on font size, or not font size, depending on um, the font type, um, also depends on, um, usually has to do a lot of it has to do with font type or um because maybe you're you're telling some dimensions to be a certain way and you're using a, a font type that's not available anymore things like that and if we switch up the font types you can usually get a lot of some things to work as far as what's in the command so if you want to match dimension styles and things like that so some of the older lists may not work because you'd have to go into the list routine and make sure that font type is the correct type that's available because you may, AutoCAD may not even have it anymore either. Okay, so this one is where we do overkill or do discard duplicates. If you didn't know about overkill, you're welcome. <laughs> overkill, how many people got lines on top of lines, right? Always. How many lines do you need, right? Just one. So discard duplicates, you can type in either one, overkill or discard duplicates due to the aliases for that one. Okay, load auto list command. So I here's where I can load it individually. So I can go in here, or if you notice there's a startup list, I can go and put in my list routines in there as well. So it starts. So on startup of the program, it loads all my auto list routines for me. Okay. So here's getting back to the user profile. So we have some different views we can do. One that you see here is your classic, they call it, which is the classic default, which is your um, pull down menus. So this is where we can drop and drag multiple different toolbars that we're used to doing. We can do that in here. Or the other style, of course, is the ribbon style um, here. And I'm going to show you in a minute. So if I right click, I can go to toolbars. So I'm just right. What this is showing right here is right. I'm right clicking up here in this gray area. Just don't click on something, one of these buttons. Right click on the gray area. I can go to toolbars. Different toolbars, I can go to I can actually dock them, but if I click on, uh, I can float them. Right now they're floating, but I can lock them down here. And then here's where I, when I click on them, I can actually go here. When I click on the toolbars, I get this 
And then I can click on whichever ones I want, click OK, and then drop and drag the locations where I'm at. Then once I'm done, I can right click and go back and lock them if I don't want them to move. Okay, and accidentally drag them. All right, so toolbar customization, of course you can customize your toolbars. Um, so like I said, I can right click, um, just like I was showing earlier, I can right click up in this area, like I'm showing here, and then um, go ahead and go to customize. And then from there, um, when I click on customize, it takes me into this format here. Okay, and notice I have all customization files here. I can, I can filter through here and sort through certain ones. This is just showing me all of them. So we'll look at the little slider bar. There is numerous ones in here already set up, but you always can change them. Okay, and if you look here, you're, um, you have some clue of where some of this stuff is located. They're the main commands in here. Notice I'm in commands. I'm not in the user interface mouse, keyboard, or profiles, I'm in commands. And I hit this add button. Once I hit this add button, wait for it, it takes me to some shortcuts that I wanna do for commands. Okay, so I can go back here. Let me go back one for you and just kind of clarify what I was talking about. So here's where I can add these customizations, okay? If I go down to keyboard shortcuts, this is command, so if I want to add commands, I can do that. I can add a icon. This is where I would put an icon in here. I put in here what the string command is. Okay, and if I want to put a secondary description in, tell me what that what this is, I can here as well. And then click apply, and then it should take over. Then the next one is keyboard shortcuts. So notice we're not on commands anymore up here. We're on keyboard shortcuts. So keyboard shortcuts, I can go in here. And I can do the same, very same thing. Right now, your shortcut keys, it'll show you all of your ones that are assigned. So if we look right here, we control R, control and copy clip is control C, print is control P, of course, control S is save, right? So all that is here. I can override anything here and I can create here as well. So I can add new here and then go ahead and it'll open up one of these, um, one of these roles and I can add to this custom one and then also same thing here I can add a custom one here and put in the function that I need to have in there to do that the biggest thing to remember when I when I do that is after I hit the plus and I put my information I always want to click apply okay and then click okay that's the same thing on this one here is after I add a command I always want to click apply and then okay Kind of walk through that here in this, in this next one a little more better um, after this one, I think it is. So here's your aliases, okay? So notice I'm in my options, okay? I'm in my options. This is a different location. I'm gonna go back one slide just to show you. Notice I'm in my options. The other one is customize. Remember, I right clicked and went to customize. So that's where you're gonna find these. Notice it's not under options where we're at here. We're under the customize for that stuff. I get a lot of people like that. It's not under there. Well, it's in two different menus. So this is customized. Here is my options for settings and things like that. System options, user pro preferences, drawing settings, drafting styles, profiles, all that is in options. And if I right click when I'm in, in draft site, I can I get a short, I get a menu and I can go to options in that shortcut menu. Okay. So here's aliases. You know, I hit our favorite purge and clean. So this is where you could find what aliases they are, there are in here, okay? I can always click new, and create custom aliases as well. I can click new here, and then this would actually give me a line that was empty, and then I would just click in the line and then put in the command, and then put in here whatever alias I wanna use, okay? All right. So when I create custom aliases here, I went too fast here. When I create custom aliases, like I said, as long as I'm not um, actually creating something over the top of something, it, it, it'll, it should be okay with it. What I would recommend doing um, is if you want something that's already here, go delete it first, okay? And then go ahead and, and then create the new one. But delete it first if it's gonna be one that's con that you're gonna use. So like a line, maybe you wanna, 
do a line for something else and use AL, you can get rid of the line, delete it, and then go add your new one. Okay. And then from here, here's some of the locations where you can go for batch printing. This is what was going to show in that video of mine, but I have them here for slides for review anyways. So if I go into the ribbon style where I got this little icon button up here, I can click on this and now go here and I go to batch print here. I also have a little icon on the top right of my um, session of, of the program as well, as well. I can click here. And of course, just like anything else, there's more places I can go, right? If I have the pull down version, other than going up here and clicking on here, I can go here and go to batch print and the pull down. And the same thing, I have this button up here if I have the standard toolbar turned on, which has the save and, and undo and redo here. That's batch print is right there. Remember, batch print is in Pro and Premium. And of course, how do we batch print? Just like essentially we do inside AutoCAD, you can add files. You also can add from a folder. Okay, I can select multiple, control select, shift select, and then go ahead and pick those and pick multiple files or multiple folders. Okay, um, from there, I can also go to system options. Here's where I can do some more customization for my system options. Of course, system options means just that. It's not for the, for the current session I'm in of DraftSite or the file I'm in, it's for the overall encompassing software. So when I go to options, I can go to system options under open save. This is where I can hit my standard and save that back to a certain level. When I hit, when I just click the save button, it'll save it down to like mine is set to 2000 to 2002. So mine is set at that. And remember, I can at any time do a file save as command and save and hit that type and go and override this save button anytime. Okay, let's see here. All right. So back to our interfaces, here's the classic with the pull down that you see. Okay, that's the, to consider the classic. Here's your ribbon, they call it draft site and annotation, which is your, um, you know, you can see annotations that are included in it because um, they're actually spelled out with annotation, um, just kind of like you would on any other ribbon in Windows or anything like that or, or AutoCAD itself um, based on that. So these are all the same there. I'm just saying here, this was new in 2016. It's there now, but just it's been there. The same thing here in 2016, they added the ribbon. You create your own customized one. You can create, you can create your own sections. You can create your own customized one if you want. Okay. The other one here is, um, is menu content. So if I right click and I can go to drafting options, that's where right here is where I'm going. So if I go to drafting options, I can get in here and these are, here's where you have the right mouse button click for drafting options. Here's your, if I hold my shift key down, like just like I do in, Auto, in AutoCAD, I actually can right click, hold my shift key on the right mouse, mouse click and I get to my e-snaps right away. Okay, here's where your standard toolbar is, just here for reference, for you guys to know, here's where all this stuff is. So there's your standard toolbar for the classic. Here's your standard toolbar that has all the information that you're used to in AutoCAD as well, okay. Same thing with layers. We have all this information that's in here. Okay. Here's the other one for the other layers tools itself. There's two different toolbars for that. So layers tools and then the layer toolbar itself that would you just saw previously. And then you want to change your system options. Um, you know, change it to the black model background when you're in the model mode, not the um this is changing it for the model. Um, we also can change it for sheet, for your sheet as well. If you want to change that from white to black, you can do that as well. Um, but this is for the model. One notice model is selected here. Okay. We do have the availability to change your white one if it's that sheet to change it to any other color color you want. If you're just used to the black one in the background. Okay. Also, this uh, out of the box, your cursor size is at 5%, so you just have a small crosshair going across. I like mine going all the way across, so that's at 100%, and this is how to turn it, just let alone display it, and this is how to make it 100% to go all the way across and all the way up and down. Okay. 
Here's where we, we have some system options where we were saving different things. We can read all DWT files. We can import DGN files. Of course, we can open and close uh, DWT files, DWGs, DXFs. We also can save out as DWGs, DXFs, and DWTs. Okay. Of course, we have auto save backup. It's at set at 10 minutes uh, by default. You can always change the location. You always can change the time and you always can turn it off. Okay. You always can do that. And this is where, but out of the out of the box, it'll be saved in this location that you see here once you load it. And then also it has a 10 minute default. Okay. Here's the big one, reverse zoom mill. This is the one that um, if you are here, I'll say it this way. If you are an AutoCAD user, do not check this on. It'll be the same as it is in AutoCAD now if you do not check this. If you want to make, if you're a, if you are a SOLIDWORKS user, okay, and you're mainly more so a SOLIDWORKS user, okay, and you ha don't have this button checked on your SOLIDWORKS settings to make it like AutoCAD, if you check this on in your draft site, it'll make the one in, it make this one like your standard one is for, for SOLIDWORKS. So if your SOLIDWORKS checkbox of for the reverse zoom wheel is not checked, you would want, and you want to make it the same in draft site, you would want to check this one. Because the one in SOLIDWORKS does for this button, so I want to be clear on this one in SOLIDWORKS when I check this, makes it like default AutoCAD, which is this not button not checked in draft site. Okay. Let me know if you have any questions on that. Send me an email. <laughs> Anyways, but you have the recording to go back to. So if, if AutoCAD is not checked, don't check it in draft site. I mean, yes, yeah, so, so, sorry. If, all, if SOLIDWORKS is not checked, for the reverse zoom mill, don't check it in draft site, okay? Um, coordinate system, um, turn off display. So if you don't like, I'm one of those people, that's why I put this in here. I don't like seeing my coordinate system. I know I'm drawing in 2D. I know what my coordinate system, up is, up is Y, right? And then X is, Horizontal. I kind of know that. Um, it always drove me crazy sometimes. So it doesn't mean that you can't turn it on, but sometimes people like to have it on if they're doing some isometric drawing and things like that. If you are doing some of that, this is where you can turn it on and turn it off. Okay. Here's your scale factor. So notice we're in our options for drafting styles and we're under drafting styles. And then that's where you see this. Okay. So units, here's where I can change units, precision, under drawing settings, under unit system. Okay. Here's where we can do some customization. Okay. So what we can do here is we're gonna we're gonna add a keyboard shortcut. Okay, so previously I showed you where we could create some other shortcuts for commands and things like that. So here's walking you through a keyboard shortcut. Okay. So I wanna add a keyboard, a new one. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here, the first step, I'm gonna left mouse click on this add button. Of course, remember before to get to this customize, I wanna right click up in the gray area, right click and get a menu and then click on customize. Okay, that's one screen chat that's kind of missing, but I get that. And then from here, I click on keyboard to get there. And then I wanna add one, so I'll click the new. It opens this line up or brings this down, knows it brings the slider bar all the way down and then wants us to add something here. I'm gonna add an F12 button, okay, here. I know it's already have an F12 here, but it'll, it'll override it, but I'm gonna put an F12 here. So I'm gonna click inside this box and hit my F12 key button, okay? And the next thing I'm gonna do, once I do that, okay, once I click in here and hit this, and click this so it's F12, what it'll do is it'll fly this out this will fly out here, this menu. This menu flies out. I can search under sources with this drop down, or I can use a smart filter and search. I'm looking for smart calculator. So I'll type in smart. And then when it comes up to what I want, I just left click and drag, left mouse button, click and drag this into this location. Okay. And what this view is showing is just zoomed in of it added. So after I've, took this 
and drag this over. Okay, or drug, depends on where you grew up, right? Um, or, or how good your English teacher was. Um, right here, drag it right there. And then from there, I have a smart clicker. What I'm showing you here is down at the bottom where you can't see down on this menu, I want to click apply. That's, you got to remember to click apply. Remember to do that. And there's my smart calculator. And the keyboard shortcut for that is QC normally, but I made mine F12. Okay, so smart calculator looks like this versus the standard calculator. I always use the smart calculator because it was QC. It was much easier to type in QC inside AutoCAD than it was to type in any of the other calculators, which were much longer. Or just hit your calculator button, right? Because now for calculator shortcut, I have to type in the keyboard shortcut CAL. It was easier just to type in QC for me. No, that's just me. That's just me. Okay. Because if we look, um, OSC8, that's your AutoCAD one. Okay. For that one. So again, command, command shortcuts, some of that are similar that you're going to be used to. Is uh, type, this purge is clean, vice versa, break is split. Also, regen or rebuild is RE. So that's the alias here in Java. Either one I type in is fine. Your layer tools, you have all that in here. You can do spell check. Uh, you can save all at once. You have that available to you as well. So shortcuts. The other one I'll talk about is um, your function keys. Remember, we were talking about hotkeys earlier. Those are here. These are just for review for you. Okay. Um, I can get area of something by typing get area. I can do that. That's a nice one. All your normal toggles are there for um, for your F buttons. And remember the new one to you in draft side is this F4, which is recent documents. We'll get into that in a minute. Um, so in 2019 and 2020, okay, um, you have these available um, options to you. And it's kind of just for your view um, on this, so you can, you can take a look. You have image tracer, you have Oh, by me, this tells you what, what they're in, okay? Um, so notice image tracer is not in this draft site standard. It's in Pro, Premium, and Enterprise versions. Same thing with home integration. Same with block attribute manager, okay? The import ribbon is in all versions. The drag and move is all in versions. Trimming and hatching is in all versions. Um, also, if we look at drawing frames and title box, that's in the Pro in the premium and also enterprise and the formula tables is in the pro. So if we want smart formula tables, uh, Excel tables to use um, inside draft site, we, you're gonna need pro at a, at a minimum to do that. If you have that functionality currently. Okay. The other benefits of pro um, is the list routine files. So that you get support for that. So you can use your current list routines in those and bring them in. And take advantage of those if you have draft site standard it does not support list routines so that's one of the bigger ones i ask about if you want if you use list routines you want to use them um pro is is an option for you for sure to be more efficient what you're used to using and then we had all these other functionalities here okay notice where it says free this is not free anymore this should be standard right here but um that's what you get for the standard so you get all that information. So what's new and what's what you have in pro What's not new, but what you have in pro is toolbox, you have design library, you have drawing compare, you also have macro recordings, just like you do inside uh, inside SolidWorks. So you can do API, SolidWorks API, which is a huge, huge benefit. Um, you can also do batch printing, layer preview, PDF underlay. Of course, we've been talking about, uh, I just used draft site APIs, which is very similar to the SolidWorks ones. And then also we have upgrades and new releases that you're available for. Um, let's see here. Uh, tech support we need to get with Enterprise. Essentially, what DraftSite Enterprise is compared to Pro, DraftSite Pro, DraftSite Pro and Standard are our standalone versions. There's a DraftSite Premium as well, which is we'll talk about. But that's a standalone license version. DraftSite Enterprise and Enterprise Plus are. Pro and premium versions network flavor. Okay. So in enterprise, just enterprise, you get everything that's in the in the pro 
plus tech support, network licensing, and deployment wizard. And the deployment wizard is a nice tool that to kick out similar settings out to everyone. Okay. Here's some tips. Uh, just some here we talk about we can save back to 13. We also can save 18, of course. But here's some other ones. If we hold the shift key down, uh, just like we do when we're in um, when we're sketching, we can override our author our author or FA command or ortho command if we want to when we hold the shift key down, similar to what we do inside SolidWorks sketching. Okay. Uh, same, of course, same keyboard shirt and as an AutoCAD. We've already went through that. Um, C is you can use to close off a sketch at the end. It'll go back to where you began, right? We can export as a JPEG, PDF, PNG, and SVG files as well. We can also save as JPEG, PDF, PNG, SLD, SVG, TIFF, and SDL file formats. And also we can attach images, bitmaps, GIFs, JPEGs, PNGs, TIFFs as well. And the biggest one I like to push is the F4 button. Um, that's a nice one for recent documents. Okay, we're gonna get into draft site. That gets us to that four. We're draft site for SolidWorks users. Okay, so real quick, let's go through that. Yep, we're good. So when sketching a line command, just like you're in AutoCAD, you're in draft site, you're in SolidWorks, you hit the L button, that's your line command. Okay, um, F4, like I said, here's a, a screenshot of it. When I hit F4, I get to my recent documents just like the R key inside your SOLIDWORKS. Uh, control tab is you can shuffle between, you hold the control button down while you, and hit the tab key while the control is held. You can shuffle between open files. Same thing with the rec uh, recent documents, I can shuffle through those as well. Um, middle mouse button, if I double click on that, just like you can, uh, it'll do zoom extents or fit if you're a SOLIDWORKS user. Okay, it'll fit the document to your um, session and then also power trim is a is a nice one power trim actually that's in SOLIDWORKS actually came from draft site so thank you draft site for having that added functionality to autocad or sorry to um to SOLIDWORKS so power trim it works the same as it does in um in SOLIDWORKS as it does in draft site all right let's talk about this the other thing is a context toolbar that you get inside draft site that you used to inside SOLIDWORKS. So if I click on a line there, if you look on the left-hand side and I click on a line, I get this context toolbar that pops up. I can change the line length. I can change the, the, the line style, layers, I have all that functionality right close to me. Same thing if you look here on the right-hand side. If I'm in a SOLIDWORKS sketch and I click a line, select the line, I get this context toolbar and I can do different things. I can do different things. Um, with that as well. So I get those shortcut toolbars, context toolbars. Mouse gestures, we talked about this earlier, but mouse gestures, if you like them inside SOLIDWORKS, you can use them inside draft site. If you don't use SOLIDWORKS and you use AutoCAD, you have this functionality available to you, which is nice. Um, we can quickly turn on what we want to. So if I left click and drag, um, notice I have eight versus four picked here. So if I left click and drag, I'm sorry, right click and drag. If we look at this one right here, this is my measure command. If I left click and drag and go to like the 11 o'clock location, if I right click and drag to there, that'll, the right click dragging will pop this circle up. And also if I go have my mouse over this button and take my finger off the right hand mouse, it'll turn on my measure command. Okay, here's where I can customize them. Notice I get four and eight. Out of the box, I think it's set up as, as eight right away. Um, and then if you can turn it off here if you don't like them. So in the pull on menu, I can go to mouse gestures to get to them. And also I can go into the ribbon as well. Okay. Or type in gesture. Okay. So also I get smart dimension inside um inside uh draft site, like I do inside SolidWorks when I'm in sketching, so I can pick a line, I can pick points, I get different reactions on what I'm doing. Notice we have baseline, we have contour, we have ordinate, very similar to what we have in SolidWorks sketching and functionality. We also get the dimension tool palette, so everybody knows this little button that you have here, and if you're a SolidWorks user, 
I click this dimension, this little box comes up. If I move my mouse over this box, this will fly this out and I can enter text before the 0 0.500. I can enter it after, I can enter it above, I can enter it below. I can add, change my, um, my tolerance on this. I can also center something. I can put brackets around it. This centers my dimension in between my endpoints or my arrows. Okay, this either centers it or left justified. I go to help right here. I also can create favorites like I can inside drawings um, inside SOLIDWORKS as well. So I can create favorites as well. Okay. Here's where we can do tool customization. So what I can do here is go and create um, a, a custom workspace if I want to per se. So the same location where you'd go to um, where we're going to customize, there is a there actually is that um, workspace customization, and it won't be named anything. It'll be it'll say custom, and then you can go ahead and change it to whatever name you want, and then. When you're in there, we can put in all kinds of different um, ones in here. And I can name this whatever I want to. Okay. So I could say drawing or I could say sketch commands. I could, you know, whatever I want to. And I can create separations as well, just like you see up here. Okay. Okay. Well, also, you have a toolbox, which you used to inside SOLIDWORKS. Um, this is kind of like a in AutoCAD, like a design center type thing that you guys that uh, saw that it calls that. This is very similar to SOLIDWORKS more so because it's some people are familiar with the anti inch and anti metric and then the British and things like that. So I can turn any one of them on or any one of them off if I choose to do so. Okay. If you're going to customize any of these out of the box, I would recommend selecting it and making a copy of it and keeping your backup original the way it is okay i would do that okay and then from there on the pull down i can get the standards and that's where i can get to some of this information as well okay so inside here is where i can do some customization as well in here for hardware and holes which we'll talk about here in a minute so the holes is very similar to like our hole wizard okay we can it has um files that are set up inside here for top right and um left uh, command or uh, views that are blocks that are intelligent when I go to put a dimension on them or I go to define them with an annotation and it knows if it's an M12 tap or it's an M10, it knows the pitch based on what hardware one I picked. So very nice in here. So most we have holes here, screw connections, the hardware is more of the of more of the toolbox, but then the other ones here are more like hole wizard that you're used to inside. So it works. And of course you can Customize that, create your own, all that kind of stuff can be done. Turn certain ones off. Maybe you want to turn certain ones off. You can do that as well. But remember to create a backup first or actually create, copy it so you can keep your backup the way it is and then go from there. Okay. Um, so here's just showing you like hardware. I can do insert. I can edit it when I, before I do it. I can also do screw connections. So these are where I can grab holes. So here's your hardware. Here's your your screw can I, and then here I can do insert, edit while I'm putting it in. Um, and then also here's where I can do a whole call out. So this is like our whole call out right here. Um, in, um, and you have that on your uh, dimensions bar as well. But this is what we were used to like whole call out in SOLIDWORKS. Okay. You also can create tables as well. So here's just a glimpse inside your design library that you get with this. So to get it, I can go to the pull down, go to tools, and then I go to design resources or control two is um, my shortcut. Notice they have shortcuts just like they do in, in SOLIDWORKS as well. Anytime you see anything after something, it's a keyboard shortcut. I go to design library. I have electrical, hydraulic, mechanical. I can you can go ahead and create these. I put these in here myself just to show you the bearing one. I put the bearing one in here and then put in some different handles and some collars in here based on that, okay? So you can build a design library of things as well. So symbols, whatever you wanna do in the, inside there, okay? We also have a draw compare, which is people in software are used to. We can compare geometry, compare things. So I compare two drawings. So to get to that, I go 
tools, draw, compare. And then I can compare this one to this one, what changed? It looks like my bearing opening here changed. And I can zoom in on this and see what the difference is. Okay. BOM, I can create a BOM, I can export. Okay, this the tables, remember this is in pro and premium, but I have that functionality as well. People are used to inside Zellers. The other thing you can do is file properties. Believe it or not, tucked up in here is if I click this, um, I can actually go to properties right here and I get this menu right here. So I can put an author, I can put in custom properties inside here as well. This is important when we're, um, when we're putting draft site uh, documents into PDM, um, we can have the metadata information so it populates in our search cards, okay? Other commonalities, I call them. Here's the reverse zoom wheel again. Remember on this one? Okay. We have drawing standards. We can verify standards so we can check for standards as well. Okay. And remember the reverse zoom wheel. We'll do this again because I might have said it wrong multiple times. Let's do it one more time. So if you do not have, this is comparing it to SOLIDWORKS. In SOLIDWORKS, if you do not have your reverse zoom wheel button checked, okay. You don't have a check in SOLIDWORKS, you want to check it here because it'll make it just like SOLIDWORKS. Okay, so if it's not checked in SOLIDWORKS, you want to check it here to be like SOLIDWORKS, if that's your desire. If in SOLIDWORKS you do have it checked, it makes it just like AutoCAD then you do not want this checked. Because this is telling it to make it like the default SOLIDWORKS that you see here. So again, if you have it checked inside your SOLIDWORKS settings, you do not want to check it here in DraftSite. Thanks everyone.